so the other day I watched a video on YouTube, a friend that I follow, I, I call her a friend, even though I don't know her, <laughs> I feel like I do, she's a fellow Kentuckian, and I did shout her out in one of my recent videos, um, her channel is Tales from the Narc Side, and she makes pretty short videos about um, the current state of our society and the horrors going on. <laughs> and uh, she was talking about how grocery stores are just practically empty and the things that they do have in stock are so overpriced, who can afford it? And meat turning brown in the coolers because no one can afford the high price and they would rather throw it out than you know, um, for people to be able to afford to buy it, you know. So I just came out of my local Dollar General store, and they don't even have water. And I know, you know, I, I, last year I bought one of these filters you put over your faucet. And I use my water from my home for coffee and for cooking things like that, but I like bottled water to drink, and I know a lot of people are like, that's so unhealthy. You're killing the environment. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't want to kill the environment, but I like a cold bottle of water, you know? And so I thought I was going to be able to make a straight shot home, and that's unfortunately not the case. I'm going to have to stop at the store and see if they have any, and if they don't, I have to go to Walmart Saturday. I don't want to, but my husband has an appointment and we have to go through there anyway, so maybe I can find a six pack of water to do me until then. But, it, you know, it's just like, where's the water? Where's the water truck? Did, did the water truck not run? People want to blame the truck drivers. Well, you know, I grew up in a blue collar community. I grew up in a coal mining community. I have a lot of friends, uh, uncles, cousins, you know, friends, uncles, and brothers, and dads, and cousins, or what husbands, or whatever, who are truck drivers, and I have always supported, even the coal trucks that, you know, I'm like, oh my God, please don't run me off the road, because they're so big and scary sometimes on these little narrow roads that we have to drive on, but I support them. I have some very good friends who are truck drivers and I don't blame the truck drivers. I wouldn't blame the truck drivers if they all threw their keys up in there and walked off because they're getting blamed for um, supply. And just like this lady that I was talking about said in one of her videos, order something from Amazon, you'll have it in three or four days or week at best. Order something through the mail uh, really don't have, did anybody really have any real problems getting items? I ordered stuff from both Home Shopping and QVC and uh, over Amazon and Walmart.com for Christmas and never had any wait time. The goods, they bringing in the goods they want us to have and they're keeping out the ones they don't want us to have, you know? Like food and I would say if you are a meat eater, you better learn how to like uh, lettuce and be lucky to get that. I told my husband the other day, you know, it's colder than kraut. We've had uh, record cold temperatures and um, we've still got a few months before planting season to start planting uh, our garden. And last year we planted a garden. We had a lot of tomatoes and green beans and some corn on the cob. And this year I'm going to hopefully put out some potatoes. And uh, hopefully uh, we tried to do uh, greens like um, spinach and stuff like that. But that didn't do too well. But we had onions and, uh, you know. People better learn how to squirrel hunt too, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying. Uh, you can't fish without a fishing license. You can't, you can't kill a squirrel or a rabbit without a license. And um, 
people who who uh, I see a lot of people on here who talk about CMC and, and using coal. Um, a lot of people, and, and I hate to agree with her, but it's true. A lot of people from the cities and and who didn't grow up using coal and using uh, coal and wood stoves would have a hard a harder time than we do because we did grow up that way. We grew up okay. I'm back. I had a little bit of an embarrassing moment just now in the store. Probably scared people to death. A few people. <laughs> I see someone's mask laying on the ground over here. They've thrown it down. I'm trying to wait on these people to get pulled out, y'all. I don't want to get hit, so I'm going to make sure that they're pulled out. Where I pull out. Yeah, someone came out of the store and just threw their mask down on the ground. I guess they figure they've been exposed to something, so they'll get a new one out. And the next store they wear it into, they'll throw it out on the ground when they come out. Okay, here's what happened. So I told y'all I had to stop and get some water, right? So I go into this store. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm standing in line. There's a lady in there that I know, and we're talking. We're just making a chit chat while we're waiting to get checked out. And I start coughing. Now, I don't wear a mask, <coughs> but she had on one because she has some health issues, and I respect that. So I, I cough. I cough like one cough, like, hum, like, <laughs> you know? And that got the ball rolling. And I started coughing my dang head off. I'm having to put my face down inside my hoodie because I don't want anybody to think I'm coughing on them since I'm not wearing a mask. And she's like, she takes off like she's like three, four feet away. She's like, she keeps walking away from me. And I'm like, I promise it's not the Runa. It's not the Runa. I promise. I promise it's not. I'm not sick. I just got choked on something. I don't know. It's possibly somebody's perfume or <clears throat> somebody was smoking, had just smoked close to me. Um, I don't know what it was. I could have just breathed in some dust. Whatever it was at that moment, I just I start coughing my dang head off and I couldn't stop. And everybody's like, looking at me and I'm like I promise I, it's not the Rona it's not the Rona so I'm just like finally as soon as the guy I, I buy the water and I'm like I ask the guy to help me carry it out because you know it's one of these old big things of water he carries it out for me and as soon as I get outside I quit coughing he's wearing a mask he's trying to stay away from me I guess he thinks I'm going to give it to everybody in town but I promise I'm not sick I'm you know, I know I sound right now like I'm nasally, but it's because I've been coughing my head off and I don't know where it come from. Anyway, I didn't even come to talk about any of that. I just wanted to share that with everybody. Um, I said I was going to make this video and put it in my playlist, my relationship with the narcissist, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to put it right here. Um, for anybody who wants to see it or, you know, listen. By now, everybody's probably left. Um, because I don't want to add videos to my relationship with the narcissist playlist because that relationship is no more. And the relationship is no more. There's nothing left to it. It's been years since it came to an end, and I have no reason to put any more videos in that. But this will go to supply in the end of the line for supply. Now, let me say this. As any of you who follow anything about narcissism knows, that narcissists never... The word discard is a word that is... Um, it's not... It's not the correct word to use for narcissists. They do not discard people. They temporarily ruin you, or try to, 
they temporarily put you away. It's like a kid with a broken toy. They break the toy, but they don't throw the toy away. The toy's still usable to them, but it just doesn't work the way it did when they first got it. But they keep it around, and sometimes they may pick it up and play with it, and then they throw it back down. <coughs> That's just an analogy, but in, in reality, human beings are not toys, and they, they do get broken. But the narcissist will always come back around. And maybe they won't. Maybe some people are just not beneficial enough to them for them to bother with anymore. Doesn't mean they ever forgot about that person. Doesn't mean that they ever would ever would not take the opportunity to bother that person again if the opportunity presented itself. So if you've been the victim of a narcissist, if you have been discarded, so to speak, by one, and you're hearing all these people talking about being hoovered, and you're thinking, well, why wasn't I ever hoovered? Or in my case, I would say, well, he hasn't hoovered me in quite a few years. Now, I'll say this. There may come a day when he does. There may come a day when he does hoover me again. He may hoover the woman he just ended the relationship with. He's probably already hoovered the one before me, and he's probably off somewhere right now with a new one. And someday, after he discards her, he will hoover her. He will hoover her. <clears throat> because that's what they do. They never get rid of supply. They use the supply at the moment that's the most beneficial to them that serves them the best and in my case such as i i said to him you know i don't i don't have any reason to talk to you anymore there's really nothing there left for us to discuss so he's left me alone for now <clears throat> because not long after he discarded or, or not long after the final hoover and I told him that I didn't want to talk to him anymore that I had nothing left there was nothing left for us to discuss he, he almost immediately got married to this other woman and now that marriage has come to an end and they're divorced and I found this out through social media through mutual friends just happened upon at just the same way that I found out about her to begin with was that I just happened upon some pictures that she was tagged in and that a friend of mine was tagged in and I see this picture and I see his name there and I'm like who is this woman where'd she come from she came out of the blue you know she must have floated down out of the sky in a hot air balloon or something and then they were married within a few weeks. And then they got a divorce. And some time has passed, some years have passed. And she had posted some stuff about it. She tagged some of those same friends that, you know, how happy she was to be free and to be putting all that behind her. I question, did he dump her and walk off and leave for the one he already had? Because make no mistake about it, he was with her when he was still talking to me. And he was still with the other woman before me, the, the woman he had children with. He was with her before he was with any of us. So he was with her when he started talking to me. And he left her to be with me, and then he left me and went back to her. But did this hot air balloon girl show up before, during, or after all? I believe she showed up during the time that he and I were together. Okay. <laughs> so, where did she come from? You know, if they knew each other a long time ago. But see, that's his M.O. I don't believe they really knew each other a long time ago any more than he and I knew each other a long time ago. We knew of each other. We would see each other in passing. We might nod and grunt, hello, how you doing, and keep on walking because we didn't know each other as far as 
friend, uh, you know, an enduring friendship or whatever. But when a narcissist is love bombing you and grooming you, they will lead you to believe that they always remembered you, that they knew you way back when. They may have spoken to you a couple of times, and that they always had a feeling about you because of that. And they make it into something that it's not. So he probably done the same thing with her. People are like, well, what do you care? Well, it's not that I care. It's not that I want him or that I'm waiting for him. But I'm just wondering whose life is he going to ruin next? Because he will ruin their life. He may not bring them to complete and total ruin. But being with a narcissist will cause ruin. And, um. <clears throat> and I had saw a post that she had uh, commented on a while back a mutual friend had posted this thing about um, I can't remember now what it was but it was something to the effect of they're in your inbox something like somebody uh tells you that they're done with you, they don't want you, but then they show up in your inbox, and she was saying something like, yeah, when him, when him and old girl don't work out, he comes back to your inbox, so I'm sitting there reading that, and I'm thinking, well, he must be messaging her, maybe it was a last ditch effort to try to get her to stop the divorce, and so, whoever old girl is, <laughs> It ain't me. It, it, I doubt it could possibly be the uh, recycled supply of the baby mama, but I kind of doubt it. Um, he kept going back to her because his child with her was still underage, and now that child is an adult, so I kind of doubt it. The only reason he would go back to her would be to run back to the comfort zone, like I was talking about earlier. I like people who go to church just to try to um, cover up their fears not because they want to find God in their heart but because they, they need some kind of comfort and they want people to believe that they've changed and that, was, that would be one reason why he might hit her back up but I just wanted to share that I said if I hear any updates or anything about him, I would share them, and that was, that's just something that was brought to my attention, that he is now divorced from her. And while she gets on social media sometimes and she talks about how hard this has been on her, I have no doubt that it was hard on her because I went through it too. I, never, I was never married to the man, but I went through the, the fallout of the aftermath of narcissistic abuse so I would say it was probably a lot harder on her but do you feel sorry for somebody that you kind of have this feeling about like she kind of knew he was with somebody else when she got together with him but then again I didn't know he was with somebody else when I got together with him so am I judging her too harshly or um is it that she didn't know either, you know? Or is it that she did know and the narcissistic grooming and love bombing of her made her to where she didn't care and it didn't make any difference to her. So it's hard to decide whether you feel sympathy for her or say, well, you know, it is what it is in the house. And I just wanted to say to everybody thanks for listening and uh, you know try to be understanding I know we're not supposed to have contact with these people and one one way is that we're supposed to not really care about what's going on in their life but um, it's kind of better to know where your enemy is than to not know where they are you know whatever but is kind of like a sneak attack. I want to be prepared. So anyway, I appreciate everybody for listening.